A recent article in the Journal of the American Medical Association and a related Netflix documentary explored what happens to twins when one of them switches to a vegan diet. It was an eight week intervention comparing the health effects of a healthy vegan diet versus a healthy omnivorous one conducted at Stanford University. Dean and I were invited to be part of the cognitive testing team for this study. The study involved 22 pairs of twins, that's 44 people total. Each pair was randomly assigned to either a vegan or an omnivorous diet. It was pretty cool. One twin would eat a healthy omnivorous diet and the other would eat a healthy vegan diet. The main thing that the researchers were looking at was the difference in LDL cholesterol levels from start to finish. But they also checked out changes in plasma lipids, glucose, insulin levels, TMAO levels, vitamin B12, and body weight, all core markers that are useful to screen when analyzing the impact of our diet on our health. Plus, they wanted to see how easy or hard it was for the participants to stick to these diets and how they felt overall. For the first four weeks, the participating twins got their meals from a food delivery service. They had great menus for both diets, focusing on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and keeping added sugars and refined carbohydrates to a minimum. Meals were delivered every week, covering breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and the participants could pick their own snacks as long as they followed the research team's guidance. Weight loss was not a factor in the study, and the researchers did not emphasize cutting calories. Everyone was told to eat until they felt full. In the second half of the study, the participants started cooking for themselves. They were taught to choose minimally processed foods and how to balance their plates with a variety of vegetables, starches, proteins, and healthy fats. The vegan group really upped their intake of greens, vegetables, beans, and plant-based sources of protein like tofu, tempeh, and veggie burgers. Most of the participants were women around 39 years of age with a mean BMI of 25.9. They kept track of what they ate with 24-hour dietary recalls and the chronometer app. Three times during the study, at the beginning, halfway through, and at the end, Everybody went to Stanford for blood tests and other clinical assessments. They even collected stool samples to inspect changes in the gut microbiome later on. After eight weeks, the vegan group had significantly lower LDL cholesterol by almost 14 points, and they lost about two kilograms of body weight and also had lower fasting insulin levels. The most interesting finding that was shared in the documentary was the telomere length increased in the vegan group, suggesting a potential for positive effects on cellular aging, while that of the omnivores remained the same. The vegan group also experienced decreases in vitamin B12 and TMAO levels, but those changes weren't significant. Interestingly, the omnivores reported enjoying their diet more, but the vegans had lower dietary satisfaction rates, especially when eating out. We did cognitive testing using a validated neuropsychological assessment called CANTAB, but didn't find any significant changes. We think that's because the participants were young, pretty sharp to begin with, and eight weeks isn't long enough to see changes in cognition. Diet-wise, the vegans had less protein and lower cholesterol intake, but they ate more vegetables and got more dietary iron. The strong points of this study was the use of identical twins. It really helped rule out differences in age, sex, and genetics. The structure was also great. Delivering meals for the first four weeks made sure everybody stuck to their diets, and then prompting participants to cook for themselves for the last four weeks simulated a more true-to-life scenario. But there were some downsides. The participants were healthy to begin with, and the study was only eight weeks long, which is pretty short if you want to see meaningful changes in metabolism. Another limitation was the fact that the study was not designed to have the same calories for everyone, so the changes to the LDL could have been from weight loss observed in the study. The documentary covered the study and also touched on the impact of factory farming on the environment. But some of the points made, like the ones about the association between dairy consumption and Parkinson's disease and the impact of casomorphin on brain aren't well established in science. Also, there's no evidence against eating fish. In fact, fact, moving from red meat to a pescatarian diet often leads to better health. Bottom line, the study showed that a well-planned vegan diet can be healthy and can lower LDL cholesterol. The fact that it was a twin diet increased the effectiveness of the study by minimizing certain variables. But it is a small study and needs to be repeated with a larger number of subjects and 
for a longer period of time for it to be generalized. Findings are not entirely new and are in line with other studies showing that a planned plant-based or at least a plant predominant diet can be very healthy. So do we have to go vegan for better health? Not necessarily. For transparency, Dean and I are vegans for three key reasons. For the animals, the environment, and health. It's a personal decision. The knowledge that we can lead healthy lives, potentially prevent diseases, and do so without contributing to the suffering and exploitation of billions of animals each year, along with mitigating environmental concerns, is a compelling reason for us to choose a vegan lifestyle. But there are a number of studies on dietary patterns, such as the MIND diet, the Mediterranean diet, Prudent diet, DASH diet, and others that show that when people eat more plants and less red meat and sources of saturated fats, with or without fish, they're healthier and they live longer. Being aware of our dietary patterns and paying attention to adequate levels of micronutrients and omega-3 fatty acids in our body is incredibly important. And remember, your diet is a very personalized issue and you should seek help from a registered dietitian or a trained specialist to help you understand your needs.